statics adventure overall, but now we're gonna kind of start a new sub adventure here. We're gonna start talking about moments. You may have heard this before as torque. Torque and moment is very similar. Our learning objectives for 2D, and so we're gonna do 2D stuff today, moment of a force. First is to describe how a force can cause a moment. And then we need to be able to state the general equation to calculate that moment. We'll talk about that. Identify the axis of rotation caused by a moment and the direction of a rotation. So we see that like axis of rotation, right? Like that maybe triggers something with torque or maybe you've seen it as called a moment in the past there. So, but it's all about this rotation. It's a tendency to rotate. Nothing is still moving. So it's a tendency to rotate. And then find the magnitude of a moment caused by a force or group of forces in which the force is at any angle. So we'll look at that, how we can do that. And then we all co also can go the other way. Find the magnitude of a force that would cause a specified moment. So we could give you the moment and then ask you to find, oh, what force is going to cause that moment? So that's what we need to be able to do. Speaking of the upcoming exam, right? These are the kinds of things that you're going to see on that upcoming exam. And also, like I said, we will talk more about that next week. We're still a few weeks out. First homework problem here has to, um, you know, just some some kind of real world situations where we have a stool and we're applying a force here and a force here. And we're asked to find what is the moment about point A. So what is that value right there? Same with this one. We have um, about more forces on there. We're asked to find what is the moment about A. And then also this is a person carrying a tray here. And um, what is the moment about point A? Oh, and I really, you know, this is, I like, I like that image too, that homework problem that's gender neutral, right? You can't really tell if it's a, a man or a woman. So it's really good, um, uh, you know, just for inclusiveness, right? And stuff. And so, you know, we have to watch out for stuff like that. Um, like, why is there, why does it have to be a man? Like in this one, why does it have to be a man up there? Or maybe that person's gender neutral too. Hopefully they're gender neutral um, and culture neutral as well, right? Because we represent everybody, um, right? The whole world um, is is represented. So, so in this one, we're also, again, asked to find the moment down here about A right there. And so that's the, those are your homework problems. All right, actually, there's one more. This one, we're given a moment here that's applied on here. We're given this MP and we're asked to find this force over here. Um, notice now we're starting to see, um, one of the things here, we're starting to see dimensions show up, like distances, right? And like when we did particle equilibrium stuff, we didn't really see distances, we saw angles. The other thing is we're seeing objects that are not all cables, right? We have a cable over here, but this object is not a cable. It's something like wood that can resist that force that's applied to it at a, at a distance. So to get us thinking about this, I've got some fun, um, as long as they're wearing their PPE, right? Exactly. Um, so for, I think we were referring to the other stuff. So um, I got some pictures here to, to get us thinking about this idea of tendency to rotate. So somebody decided to drive their car into the water down here and you can see that there's a car sitting upside down right there. And so they went and they got this crane and they started to lift the crane, they started to lift the car out of the water and it got so far and then boom, the crane went rotating. Notice how it rotated, right? It went, it went from being right side up and it rotated. So that's that tendency to rotate. That's like one equation to be able to calculate that. Like all they needed one equation. Now maybe they don't know the weight of the car exactly or something like that, but you could, you know, you could estimate it probably or like overestimate it. So then they go and they say, okay, well let's get a, a bigger crane, right? So they go and they get this bigger crane and they pull the car out and then they start pulling the other tow truck out of there and kaboom, this one goes rotating back into, again, rotating back into the water there um and falls in so that's a that's what a moment is is it's the tendency to rotate now to relate this to what we're going to be doing in statics i have a little demo video that i made last semester here today i have a demonstration for the moment of a force i have weights that equal about five pounds and i have a rigid object this board right here if i take these weights 
And, and we're going to draw pictures of all this stuff. This is really for the visual learning part of this. And, and so don't feel like, you know, you can write some stuff down, but we'll write everything down and we'll draw pictures of all this stuff um, after we watch a few videos. And I put them on the board right next to my hand. It's pretty easy for me to hold these up. Now, what happens if I move the weights out about halfway? It definitely becomes harder for me to keep this board horizontal. And then what if I move them out even all the way? Now, it becomes really hard for me to hold this board horizontal. So same weight, right? But just a different distance from, um, from where I'm holding on to that. This is a demonstration for the principle of transmissibility. I have my board here and I've got my five pounds worth of weights. If I hang these weights from any spot along this rope that I've suspended, if I hang them from right here, if I hang the weights further down along this rope, or even down here, I am feeling exactly the same moment. So anywhere along that line of action, I am going to feel exactly the same moment. So what that means for us in statics is that we can use any point along the line of action of a force to calculate the moment. And that is the principle of transmissibility. Okay, so let's go and let's take um, we'll write some of this stuff down and then there's one more video there as well. Um, the principle of transmissibility actually let's um, let's see where do I want to I'm gonna watch the axis of rotation video as well. So let me start um, writing this stuff off over here. So um, the first thing I want to write down and, and we can we'll come back to that picture if, if we need it right there is that for our moment of a force, one of the key things, and I mentioned this with the homework, is we now have rigid objects that are not cables. Okay, and so these rigid objects, they resist compression. We had talked about before with a cable, they only resist tension. So right, they only resist a pulling force. They don't resist a pushing force. Compression is that pushing force. And so like if I have this right here, if I push on this, I can't squeeze it together, right? Where a rope doesn't resist that. They also resist something called bending they resist because they resist compression and they resist tension as well they they resist something called bending now i'm gonna this is not very you know this is what bending is this is what happens when something bends is just like that just like it sounds now they resist that from happening remember we assume everything is rigid so even if it is trying to do this it's really going to stay in the same shape because we're assuming that everything is perfectly rigid and then the other thing that we saw is that moments cause this tendency to rotate. And the equation is the moment is equal to F times D, where D is the distance that is perpendicular to the line of action. So I, at the line of action of the force. And so we had talked about one of the, the first things that we did is I, when we drew the features of a vector, I said the line of action. M stands for moment. M is moment. And so we had talked about the very first time we had talked about the line of action of the force. And so now we're really going to start seeing that line of action coming more and more into play here. And so let's draw a picture of that first 
um, that very first video, which was not principal transmissibility, we'll write down principal transmissibility stuff. But basically, I had a board here. Let's figure out, you know, it got really hard for me to hold up that board. And so if we have this board and I was holding on over here at point A, we can say, well, that's where my hand was. That's where I put my hand at point A. And then I had a five pound force over here. So I had F was equal to five pounds. And we'll assume that my board was horizontal and then gravity would be then perpendicular to that horizontal, right? And we have the line of action, right? This would be the, the line of action of the force is goes infinitely in both directions. Now, what was our, our tendency to rotate was actually this way, wasn't it? And so that is the moment that I was feeling. That's the moment about point A. The MA is the tendency to rotate. And I'm kind of getting near the top of the screen here. Let me know if, if any of that stuff is cut off, is the tendency to rotate. So an MA is, in my, in my tendency, the board wanted to go down like that. Well, our perpendicular distance, it needs to be perpendicular to the line of action. And so there's where I'm perpendicular to the line of action. So that's my distance D right there. And so I can find my MA simply just equal to F times D, which is five pounds times my D. And that board, I actually have it here somewhere. Um, that board is basically three feet long. So we'll say that's equal to three feet for this problem. So times three feet. And so what I was feeling when I was holding that board is 15 foot pounds or pound feet. Um, you'll see it written both ways. It doesn't matter if you say foot pounds or pound feet or anything like that. So I was feeling 15 foot pounds and that gives you an idea, right? That was kind of hard for me. Has anybody ever messed with a torque wrench before? I know I have some people in here that work out. Yeah, Ahmed, you, I think I remember from your personal data sheet, you'd like to work on cars and play the guitar and some other stuff, right? Um, What's like a like what's like a typical torque that you you know I don't you know for whatever or like last time you used a torque wrench? Um, I don't know. They're they they vary a lot actually depending on what you're doing. Um, a lot of times like head bolts for engines they're like ninety foot pound with a torque angle as well. Like okay. You, to, you torque it down and then you have to do torque angle, and then oh. yeah. Oh, interesting. <laughs> so. Torque angle. Yeah. I've never, I've never heard of torque angle before. Um, I'll have to talk yeah. with you about that sometime offline. Um, yeah. So yeah, the ninety foot pounds. I see. John said uh, eighty foot pounds. So that's that's quite a bit, isn't it? Right. When fifteen foot pounds, and I was, you know, sitting here struggling with one hand. But just to give you an idea of how much that distance, right, that really can make a big you know, a big change. Now, you know, the, the, you know, whoever is saying like, you know, 80 foot pounds and 90 foot pounds that you've done this before, if you had a three foot long torque wrench, um, well, you probably only need to apply what, like three times, you know, 30. So you only need to apply like 30 pounds. And I think most people can do that, apply 30 pounds, and then you're going to get to that 90 foot pounds um, of torque there. Okay. Let's also write down the principle of transmissibility here, just the definition and actually, because we saw that video, um, but the principle of transmissibility, we'll just write down the definition and transmissibility is like Mississippi trans, there's like two of everything, two S's and everything, transmissibility, or it's all like I's and S's, transmissibility. Um, and that just means for us, that we can use any point on the line of action. For calculating M. And we'll see more what that actually means when we, when we do some um, examples here. Would that be for like uh, the line of action for the force or is that for both of them? Just for the force. Okay. Yeah. 
the line of action oh thank you yeah of the force um and there really is um the moment doesn't really have a line of action let me throw that in there um the line of action how can i make this look like i want it to the line of action of the force for calculating m so yeah that line of action we can use any point along that line of action what are the units for a moment is it always going to be foot pounds or can it be like newton meters or something like that yeah great question yes it can be newton meters it's any force times distance so it could be kilonewton centimeters it could be foot inches um or not foot inches um it could be inch pounds it could be foot pounds it could be i guess mile pounds i've never seen mile pounds before but um if if the moment of inertia is rotating clockwise would that make it negative okay good question we're going to talk about actually that's a perfect question to lead into our next video we're going to talk about how we figure out the sign on these whether it's negative or it's positive okay so let's take a look at this next video here let's talk about the axis of rotation for moments i have a right-handed coordinate system here and i also have the board if i have pulled the board here and apply a force here the tendency to rotate is counter clockwise if I hold the Cartesian coordinate system against the board and again apply this force, we can see that it's creating a rotation about the Z axis. This would be a rotation about the Y axis and this would be a rotation about the X axis. So a force here causes a rotation about the Z axis. The moment vector points along the axis of rotation, but we need a way to figure out if it's a positive or negative component. We can do that using the right hand rule. We take our right hand and we curl our fingers in the same direction as the tendency to rotate. So if we have a force here, same direction as the tendency to rotate, my thumb is going to point in the positive z direction that would be a positive component for that moment if i applied a force over here and it caused it to rotate the other way i take my right hand curl my fingers in that same direction as a tendency to rotate my thumb would be pointing now in the negative z direction and so that would be a negative component and it doesn't matter what your perspective is like we're looking at the screen here but try it right let's try the one where it rotates clockwise if you point if you take your hand and it rotates clockwise it doesn't matter that we're on our screen right which way does my thumb point my thumb points into the screen which is in the negative z direction or if i rotate my my hand counterclockwise my thumb points out of the screen and so just like your thumb would point out of the screen and that means it's a positive moment. So let's draw a picture of this now and let's title this next section here, moment vectors. And we'll write down everything that we saw in that video. And so first they point the vector, the moment vector, it points in the direction of the axis of rotation. And so what we just showed right there, right? I had the board there and it was really more just because of, it was easier for me to hold the board at the center of it for this demo. But let's go ahead and let's put the board, let's put the, the coordinate system over here at point A. And so we had this, the X axis going off here. We had the Y axis going up and then we have the Z axis coming out of the page. And this is still, just like we talked, this is still point A right there. And let's still do this same example where we had our five pounds that was over here at this distance of D 
equal to three feet. So our D is still equal to three feet. So we saw, right, if we apply that force right there, we are going to take our, our tendency to rotate is going to be like this, isn't it? Right, so that's still our MA. That's our, our ten, remember, that's our tendency to rotate is right there, that MA. So there's our, our tendency to rotate. Now, if we, if we do that now with our right hand, right? So as long as you use the right hand, you can do it behind your head, you can do it behind your back, it doesn't matter. As long as you use your right hand, take that right hand, go in the same direction as the tendency to rotate, the thumb points in the positive Z direction. That is actually the moment vector. So right here, and I'm gonna draw this with two arrows, that is MA. And it's going in the positive Z direction, so it's actually gonna be positive 15 K hat would be my moment vector for that one. And we're gonna talk more about moment vectors next time on Monday. We're gonna go into 3D and do moment stuff. Let me add this as in foot pounds right here. So we're gonna we're gonna talk more about that. And we we used to do this the right hand rule for the sign. And so what we found was if the thumb in the positive Z, and that's how we said, oh, it's a positive K hat vector. So thumb in the positive Z, positive K hat on the vector, which is what we did up here, right? We said that's a positive 15 K hat. Now, what this means for us in 2D in two dimensions, which is really what we're focused on today, this is always going to be true. This is always going to be positive, And this is always going to be negative. But it's based on the right hand rule, right? Because when we do counterclockwise, our thumb is going to point in the positive Z direction. When we do clockwise, our thumb is going to point in the negative Z direction. Oh, we were talking uh, about torque wrenches and bolts and stuff before. As has anybody ever heard of like lefty loosey righty tighty for a right hand or is it, it's a right hand thread right actually your right hand rule just like we're doing here will tell you what direction a right hand thread is going to go so like sometimes they're like underneath a vehicle or something like that and you're like well which way is left or like you're like reaching underneath something and you can't see it and you're like oh which way is like going to tighten or which way is going to loosen if you use your right hand so if you go like if you want the bolt to go this way then you need to rotate the, the bolt that way. If you want the bolt to go this way, then you rotate the bolt that way. And so you can always figure out, no matter where it's at, you can always figure out with your right hand which way it's going, um, which way it's gonna go. So kind of a cool thing, right? It's actually related to right, that's why they call it a right hand thread, is because it's gonna go whatever direction your right thumb is, is pointing. Okay, but always in 2D, right? So this will always be the case here for 2D. Counterclockwise is positive, clockwise is negative. Okay, so really cool stuff here, really fundamental stuff that we're gonna do. Let's look at um, an example now. Let's start building off of this first example. We'll do one in SI units now. What if I took a, um, a board here and Instead of having at the, you know, at the end of this board, what if now I had a force, I'm gonna put it right in the center from top to bottom. I don't really care about the top to bottom dimension in this example. Um, but what if I had a force out here that was like 10 kilonewtons? And now it's at an angle. And so I've got this, let's say 55 degrees right here and then we want to find 
about, we'll make the moment right here about point A. And we have a distance here from point A to the 10 kilonewtons. This is going to be two meters. So we have a two meter distance. We've got that 10 kilonewtons right there. And so if we want to find the moment about A, remember we our, our equation um, M is equal to FD. D is that perpendicular distance. So where is that going to be? We take our line of action, right? And that line of action of the 10 kilonewtons kind of extends infinitely in both directions. So there's our line of action of the force there extends infinitely in both directions. And then where do we go perpendicular? And we have to go back through whatever point we're trying to find the moment at. And we want to find the moment here at A. So we are looking for what is the moment at A is what we're trying to find. So wouldn't perpendicular, if we if I took a, you know, a pencil or something like that and I held it on there, couldn't I figure out if I held it perpendicular to my line of action and my force, when I see that that perpendicular distance is probably about, oh, maybe it's like this one right here. Wouldn't that be, that looks like that'd be a line that was perpendicular. And so if we could find that, that's our D, isn't it? That's our D in M is equal to F times D. And we can use geometry to find that. And our geometry, like we know this distance across here, that's, two meters. If this is 55 degrees, then that means that this angle right here is also 55 degrees. So I think we can find D with the, let's see, we know the hypotenuse and we're looking for the relative to our 55 degree angle, that would be opposite, right? So I think the sine of theta um, is going to give us the opposite, which is D over the hypotenuse, which is two meters. So I think we can find D is going to be equal to two times the sine of theta, right? Or two times the sine of 55. So then if we have that distance D, we could, we could then say, okay, well, our moment and ooh, which way is that going? Which direction is that going to cause a, a rotation? If we have a, a force that's going up this way, isn't that going to cause, is that going to cause like it to rotate clockwise or counterclockwise? I think that's going to be counterclockwise, right? So our count, we're going to have counterclockwise. So it's going to be positive. And so we know it's positive because it's counterclockwise. It's causing it to rotate counterclockwise. It's a positive 10 times D which is going to be equal to a positive 10. And let me put in the units there, kilonewtons times D, which is two times the sine of 55. And I'm gonna end up then when I do that of a um, minus, or not a, not a minus, a positive 16.4 kilonewton meters. Oh, and then I see Kate is already on to our next thing. Awesome, Kate. Yeah, can we just do, break it up into components? And actually that's typically easier. Um, break into components is better. And so instead of doing it as like finding where this line of action where we have that perpendicular distance D to the line of action. What if we just did this instead where we had, we have our, our board here and we're gonna take that the original 10 kilonewtons, it's at a 55 degree angle, 10 kilonewtons. And we're, let's see, we've got our 55 degree angle right there. Couldn't we find, couldn't we break this up into the x component which would be 10 times the cosine of 55 and then the y component would be 10 times the sine 
of 55 10 sine of 55 right there and we have our we're still trying to find the moment about point a we have this distance from here to there we know that distance is two meters and we are still looking for the moment about a and let's now we can think about these in terms of their components let's look at the x component first if i'm holding this ruler right here and i pull straight with the x component right there is that causing any rotation about point a no and the reason is is because the line of action of this thing look where the line of action goes so that's the the line of action of the of the the x component and so that line of action goes right through that point so if a line of action goes through that point it can't cause a moment now how about our 10 sine of 55 that's just like our first force that we started with right isn't the perpendicular distance just going to be d so now in this case our ma is really equal to the 10 cosine of 55 times zero meters right and so that goes that really goes away and then plus because it's still going counterclockwise 10 times the sine of 55 times 2 meters which is exactly the same that we got before right it's equal to a positive 16.4 kilonewton meters that is a demonstration of the principle of transmissibility right we used didn't we use two points on the line of action we two points on the line of action gave us exactly the same thing technically you could go up like a million feet along the line of action or a million meters along the line of action and use that point if you do you just have to figure out your distances you would get exactly the same you'd still get positive 16.4 so that's also an example to show the principle of transmissibility. So great point, Kate. Thank you. Any other questions? Let's take a look at another example. In this one, let's let's go away from our straight board what if we now had a board that made an l shape so we go over and then the board comes up and it's all one solid piece of wood or steel or whatever material we're playing with here and i'm going to apply a 500 pound force up here at that spot right there they tell us some geometry here. Uh, we have a point uh, this distance from here to right there to the center of that right there. That's a distance of six feet. And then we have it from here from the center of that segment to this. Again, I'm not worried about the thickness of that board. I'm just going to the center line of everything. That's a distance of two feet. And then my force is in an angle up here of 35 degrees and we can label these points this will be point a we'll call that right there point b and this will be point c right there and what they want us to find for this is they want us to find the moment about a So we could, we could try to go in here and figure out where that line of action of this 500 pounds is, where it falls relative to A. We could find our perpendicular distance from A to that line of action. But what's going to be the easier way to do it is to break that force up into X and Y components. Because 
normally like and actually this is true for like real world stuff all your dimensions are given like relative to the x and y coordinate right so because we have a six feet in the x direction we have a two feet in the y direction so that just makes our life easier if we break that force up into x and y components so if we just draw a wireframe l right there and we can show that oh we're going to have the x component which isn't that going to be 500 times the cosine of 35. we're going to have a y component that's going to be 500 times the um sine of 35 degrees right there and then we have these distances we know that this distance right here is six feet and we know that this distance right there is two feet and we want to find the moment about point a and so let's just take each one at a time let's just write out like let's just start with 500 sine 35. first is it negative or positive and actually i saw a lot of people here from our front rower here today matthew blackburn negative or positive what do you think It's going to be positive. It is. It is going to be positive, right? Because isn't that 500 going to cause a clockwise rotation? Um, think about, you know, when you do the components, still think about the lines of actions of these components. That component is right there. And, you know, you can think about that force acting anywhere along that line of action. It doesn't have to be right up here where it's applied. The other thing I suggest is look what I just took a little piece of paper and it's not even very square or anything, but if, I, if I'm if i here and I apply, and remember I can apply that force anywhere along the line of action, look at that, it rotates it. For me, from my perspective, it's rotating it counterclockwise. You can even just use, a, you don't even have to fold it, you can just use a piece of paper and where you draw your picture on the piece of paper and just like hold your, your finger on whatever point you're trying to, to rotate and then push along the line of action and you'll see your paper will rotate in whatever direction the physical object would would rotate in as well so yeah positive and what's my perpendicular distance is it six or is it two um alex belly i'm sorry could you repeat that again Yes. Is it six feet or is it two feet to the to the 500 sine of 35? What's my my perpendicular distance? We also sometimes refer to that as the moment arm. You're going to hear me start calling it the moment arm because it's the arm. It's the distance to the force that's causing that moment. Would that be six feet then? It is six feet, right? Yeah, because look, we have to think about like where are we perpendicular? How far is that line of action, the purple dot it dash line how far is it away yeah absolutely it's six feet okay and then how about the 500 now let's do the 500 times the cosine of 35 take your piece of paper hold your finger on a and go anywhere on the line of action of this on your piece of paper so you could go you could put that force over here you could put that force over you could make it a pushing or a pulling force however you wanted to do that which direction is that going to go Anybody? Clockwise. Yes. The other thing that you can do too, thank you, Leah. Um, the other thing you can do is just take this arrow for the force and just kind of wrap it around point A. Doesn't that tell you? Tell, that's clockwise, isn't it? Right, so you can also just kind of think about it like that. Um, and then, so times then, oh wait, we're not done the times. So clockwise, that means it's negative, right? Um, it's because this is, that one we decided was clockwise based on the picture. This one we decided was counter clockwise, counter clock. Um, and then the distance on this one is two feet. So part of that force is causing a positive moment, Part of that force is causing a negative moment. And so when we plug in our numbers here, where'd my numbers go? Um, we're gonna find, let's see, the positive part of this 
is the sine one is 1720.7 and then we have a minus 819.2 which is going to give us a total of positive 901.6 and that's going to be in foot pound units right there and so now we know that force on the end of that thing is actually causing a positive 901.6 moment so if you were holding on to on to that I don't think I'd be able to hold on to that thing with the 500 pounds out there. I don't think I'd be able to hold it with my hand, right? At 901, I could I could hold 15 foot pounds, um, but not much more than that. So really, when you're doing those homework problems, really pay attention to the lines of action. Um, and so so think about like. How is that line of action? Where on that line of action can I find my perpendicular distance? And then use any point on that line of action to figure out if it's negative or positive. And then, so I see a question here, why is the sign um, counterclockwise? So if we look at, let me do it in a different color here. Um, about orange. So if we look at this force, right? The sign is going up like that. And if I just take this and loop it around point A, that and I just continue that arrow in that direction, that is going right. That's in the counterclockwise direction. And so it's all like we have to figure this out all from our picture. And so, you know, one of the difficult things is, you know, sometimes it might be, you know, a just because like we have a positive Y force, that doesn't mean it's always um, it's always going to be counterclockwise. Like what if I just switch the L around? What if I made the L over here? and put 500 sine of 35 right there. Well, now isn't that gonna cause a rotation this way? So now it becomes right. So I can't say like, um, I, I, can't, I can't say like, you know, always a positive Y is always a positive moment or anything like that. It depends on where it is. And then how do you decide which way to loop the arrow? Well, whatever direction the force is going. So my force was going this way. And I just want to, I guess my force, since my force is going that way, that tells me the path and I just have to make a circle around A. Does that make sense? Oh, curve it to the right. Well, then I guess, how do I get back around A though? I can't, I guess it's because I got a curve. Well, does that work too? I guess it's because I got to go back towards A. Yeah, I think it's just because it's away from the moment at point A. But remember, you can always, that I was just, that, that's a, a supplemental way of doing things. Um, I think the best way is, is just to take like, you know, something like this and push on it and see which way it rotates or take your paper and push on it and see which way it rotates. Okay, sorry I went over a little bit there. Um, Thank you all for your attention today and all those questions. Have a great rest of your Friday. Have a great week.